What's up, everybody? It's Ken Jack from Lights Camera Barstool hitting you with a brand new breakdown of Star Wars The Bad Batch, this time episode four. Uh, preemptive apologies, no Robbie or Clem on this one. Sometimes life just gets in the way. Shit happens, you know what I mean? Uh, they'll be back for the next episode, though. And in the meantime, I have a full breakdown for you. Got Easter eggs, it got theories, all of that fun shit. Um, no need to waste any time, just jump right into it. We basically pick up right where it left off, and the ship is in need of supplies. It's in need of fuel, probably in need of repairs as well, uh, because they're just the this ship's just getting the shit beat out of it nonstop. Um, so they decide to land on the closest inhabited place to do those repairs and get those supplies, and that happens to be the moon of Pantora, which is something we've seen before. We'll get more into that in the Easter egg section of this. Um, and so they land on the on this big uh, sort of port city, let's say. And they have a little dude to do with this little dock master guy who takes a bribe for not scanning their ship into the system. Um, and he's like, yeah, give me more money. Give me more money. He's a toothpick guy, which is another thing we'll get to. This is a big toothpick town. Um, so he is basically like the evil chaos version of Queel from Mandalorian. Because, and I'm just saying that because they're just two unlocked characters. That's that's more or less just it. Um, so he then immediately double crosses them and then radios Fennec Shand. You see here, she's taking on a bounty specifically to take on Omega. But you can see that in the reflection right there of the hologram. Um, so she's going after Omega, and she's going to go chase after them now. Uh, so Wrecker and Tech stay to do the repairs, while Echo, Hunter, and Omega go into town to get some supplies, again, some food, fuel, or whatever else that they need. Um, and just, they figure they're going to sell off some of their military gear to try and get more credits. They try and sell off to this guy, this little shopkeeper. He's giving him a hard time. Again, another toothpick guy. You can see it right there. I'm pointing over here because my, my second monitor is over here, but I'm going in the exact opposite direction. But uh, he's he's another, again, big toothpick guy. Um, they he try to sell him some of the, uh, I think it's like a big mine, basically, for some credits. He says, no, I don't want that. And it's black market shit. But then immediately tries to buy Echo, who he thinks is a uh, uh, like a droid because he's in disguise. And um, which is weird logic there, but that's a whole separate conversation. Um, so he said, so they they basically sell Echo to this shopkeeper for some money, and he, and Hunter tells him like, "Look, once we get all these supplies, just up and leave. We'll we'll get out of here anyway." Um, and Echo goes along with that plan. Um, so in this, while this is happening, uh, Omega goes after this disgusting space pug thing, and I say it's a space pug because you can just tell that this animal would not survive if there wasn't conscious life constantly taking care of it. Just by looking at it, you could tell. So Omega chases after that little space pug thing because it steals her doll. Um, and while she's chasing it, she gets runs into Fennec Shan, and Fennec Shan is like, "Hey, I'll take care of you. Don't worry, I'll get you back to your friends." And uh, Omega, being trusting and not understanding of how the world works, and scan, she's grown in a tube and only lived lived on Camino, um, so she goes along with her. Um, they uh, and she also she kind of teaches her like some merc shit, like, "Hey, this is how the universe works. Uh, you can steal shit from people and get away with it. It's totally fine." But Omega, being I think a little bit more altruistic is like uh, you know I'm, I'm okay with being rule breaker like the bad batch are but like you know a more uh yeah let's say a, like a rogue rule break like like a good guy a chaotic good she doesn't want to be chaotic bad um and when the meantime they run into uh hunter hunter says like you know get away from her get away from her and they get into a little firefight uh, a little standoff between hunter and fennec shand and fennec shand beats the shit out of him um of repowering him and hitting with her helmet and knocking him out cold which but not so, I thought it to me a little bit more of a fight. She just beat the shit out of him. It was a pretty fucking good fight, to be honest. Um, and then she runs into a maintenance tunnel. Uh, Omega is does or rather escapes into the maintenance tunnel, uh, runs into Wrecker. Wrecker then says, you know, go take this ladder, go up this maintenance, this maintenance tower, and I'll take on Fennec Shand. She he goes to fight Fennec, and Fennec, instead of just shooting him with her gun, which she still has, uh, decides, you know, I'll just take him on hand to hand and just throws him straight into a wall, knocks him out cold, too. She just beating the shit out of the, all of the bad batch, like just one by one by one by one by one. Um, uh, what do you call it? The they end up going over onto this tower thing that and she and um. Uh, Omega does, and Fennec Shan chases him all the, her all the way up the tower, and she's about to fall, but she uh, uh, Shan kind of like pushes her onto this like dump truck thing, and he she jumps on with her. Hunter, in the meantime, regains consciousness, gets on a speeder bike, and chases after them, which you can see here. Um, and it, as this is happening, some cops run after her. Fennec Shan just shoots them dead. Like again, last episode of this show, we had some Imperial commandos burning civilians alive. And this episode we have Fennec Shan just killing cops. 
So if anyone tries to tell you that, you know, this is hey, it's a cartoon, it's a, it's a kid's cartoon on Disney Plus, they're fucking cop killing in this. Like they're burning people alive in this. Like this is this shit is going down in this that you would not even see in regular Star Wars movies. So just keep that in mind when you're like uh, maybe if you're tentative about going to the series or you're trying to convince anyone else to get into this series. Um, so they uh, end up getting like a hunter rather ends up getting Omega away from uh, Fennec Shand. Fennec Shand is chasing after them and he like kind of grabs that mind thing, which he tried to sell off earlier, uses it to like blow up her speeder and then like knock her away. And then they, he goes and reunites with the rest of the bad bats at the ship and they escape fly off to the next destination. Their basic uh, idea at the end of it is like, you know, we need to find out who the fuck hired, who hired this bounty hunter to go after Omega and why. Um, and in the meantime, Fennec Shan contacts somebody we don't know who and says, hey, look, they got away, but I'm going after them and I'm going to get them. Um, so that's basically the full episode. As far as the episode goes, I really liked it was like a good setup episode and it not only had some of the best action of the series so far, but I think a really great introduction to Fennec Shan because, you know, there there are, I think, limitations to what you can do with a physical character. Um, especially just in Phoenix Shand, obviously played by Ming Na Wen and voiced by Ming Na Wen in the series. Um, like there's there's limitations to what you can do in the physical world, but in animation, you can do whatever you want. You can make someone more physical. You can do more fluid action, and I think they did a great job of you know showing her in this. Um, and, and this is, I believe, like 20 years previous to the events of Mandalorian, roughly around there, too. So that they just, I think they did a really great job of introducing her and making her setting her up as just like a really cool like sort of western bounty hunter style badass and i I really just love her dynamic feel um i will say as far as this episode goes a relative to the rest of the series i'm hoping that they get off of this like mandalorian style serial flight plan where it's like you know let's let's go somewhere let's retrieve something let's fix the shit like there's like a couple things that like it feels like they've been doing it the last three episodes and and now kind of want them to get away from that and do like an arc you know what I mean? I want them to do something more similar to the the world of Clone Wars, where like it's a story instead of it being like a one off, one off, one off. It's do do something for a few episodes that's connected to the same sort of thing instead of just having the overarching story and then like the subplots in between. Um, but still, I think really, really good. And I'm getting an amazing setup for what we're going to get later on and an incredible introduction of a live action character into the animated world. Uh, but now we can get into the Easter eggs, like I mentioned before, Fennec Shand, obviously in The Mandalorian, one of the biggest connective pieces that was teased ahead of the show's release. Um, like, hey, look, we got Fennec in here um, from come from The Mandalorian. And I thought, again, her introduction is really cool. Um, another thing, and I don't know if this is an Easter egg, but I thought that the Echo bot disguise looked a lot like Chappie. And that might just, that's probably nothing. That's honestly, it's probably 100% nothing. But it just it looks so similar to me to Chappie, and that might just be because I have Chappie on my mind all the time. But it just I thought there was something there. It looked a little bit similar. Um, next up is the moon that they're on, Pantora. It's featured in Clone Wars before many times, or uh, I'll say two times, I believe. Um, and first time that they go to uh, they meet Pantorans is when they go to Order Plutonia, uh, which is the the planet that Pantora uh, orbits, and they have like a claim. The, the Pantorans have a claim on the planet. They say like, hey, nothing sentient lives here. It's ours. Um, but they find these like Yeti type creatures that like they, they find out are sentient. So they keep the planet. It's, it's a whole separate thing. Um, there's another episode where they go to a bl- uh, blockaded Pantora to help Ryu Chuchi, who's the Senate representative from Pantora, and they help like break the blockade. Um, there are a few big Pantoran characters in Clone Wars and in just the movie sequels or prequels. Um, the biggest one is Baron Papanoida. Who you see here in Revenge of the Sith on the left and you see on the right here in uh, Clone Wars. And if he looks a little bit familiar, that's because he is portrayed in Revenge of the Sith by none other than George Lucas. And that's obviously what the character is modeled after when they made him in Clone Wars as well. Um, just a funny little bit. And just I, I, I don't know. I would love just seeing that big George Lucas just chilling there. Um, next, we see tech hack into some security cameras. Um, and these security cameras, I think, look well, they basically are the same ones that you see in the, on the Death Star. Uh, in the detention block. Uh, and, and so, and this is actually kind of funny behind the scenes peek. Um, when I was looking up these security cameras, because I was like, these definitely have a name. Um, so I look on Wikipedia to try and find it out. Um, they don't have a name, but they do have a Wikipedia entry security cameras. Uh, and they're separate. They have two separate entries for both Canon and Legends. And both definitions are the same thing. It's like 
it's just the definition of a camera but they had but they're different because of course the legends and the canon one have to be different definitions of everything and i just found that very funny um the chase on pantora was very similar i, I think on purpose to the chase sequences and attack of the clones um they use a lot of the same audio cues and a lot of the same just audio effects for like the speeders for the chase sequences for like the zoom by effects whatever you would call that a lot of that was very very similar and again i think on purpose Fennec Shand not only is a bounty hunter a lot like um uh i forgot her name but she literally also looks like her too the the bounty hunter that they chase in attack of the clones um the changeling um next is the i think this episode or rather this episode did it featured bobby moynihan and taryn Killam. both of them are huge star wars fans you can see them here in an snl skit that they had done before um both actual real life big star wars guys bobby moynihan has voiced characters in uh star wars before at taryn Killam, i believe voiced the stormtrooper uh, Bobby Moynihan, I think, voiced a couple different characters in Rebels. Um, uh, it's just the, the, so, and so Karen Killam voiced the Doc Master, like the corrupt Doc Master guy. Bobby Moynihan voiced the shopkeeper. Both of them, again, toothpick guys uh, in this in the show. I don't know why. I don't know if there's like a reference there for something, but big toothpick guys. Um, and they were both featured in this episode, which is cool. We love seeing any celebrity. I think that just actually like Star Wars having the opportunity to be in a Star Wars property. Um, Next up is the planet of Idaflor, which they mentioned right in the beginning, like, hey, we'll go to Idaflor. It's uninhabited, blah, blah, blah. I know that a lot of um, the other just um, uh, just sites and all of that shit, like, they don't know where this is from. I don't know where this is from. No, I can't find an entry of it anywhere online. Um, it's probably everything in Star Wars is on purpose, especially when it comes to Dave Filoni, like the, the, the prequel trilogies and shit. Like, they were just making shit up as they go. It doesn't matter. But like with with Filoni, almost everything he does is on purpose. I, I don't know what Ida Floor would mean. First thing I thought is I'm sure we'll find out in like five years when they do something else that happens on Ida Floor. Um, but we'll we'll figure that out as we go. Um, so there are some questions I think now for just where this series is going to go. Um, and I think the biggest question is just who hired Phoenix Shand. And I, I don't. I think that the basic idea right is that it almost has to be the Kaminoans because the prevailing theory for everyone is that like omega is a force sensitive clone she has to be like that's why she's getting such a, she's in the forefront of every all the the, the show basically um and the Kaminoans they need to like demonstrate their value in order to retain the empire contracts and like we had talked about on the last episode uh the clones are basically the entirety of the Kaminoan gdp so if they don't have this clone army like they're fucked so in in the biggest guy who's against them is Tarkin because Tarkin's like we can just use conscripts it's cheaper it's easier to get loyalty blah 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 um, and I think the the way that they're maybe thinking about this is hey if we can make this project of clones for sense of clones work for Palpatine we can skip the middleman of Tarkin go straight to the fucking source and make it and, you know he's if we make four sense of clones we're fucking in like Flynn you know uh, the Emperor is never going to get rid of us as long as we're making him four sensitive dudes. And this would also add to just the the resume of Dave Filoni being the 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 sequel and prequel trilogy cleanup guy, um, because he would help now clean up this issue with the Palpatine clones, and it, it just it, it makes sense to me. And also, P.S. Just congrats to Dave Filoni for getting the title of executive creative director at Lucasfilm. Um, apparently, they, he had been promoted last summer, but they just didn't update the his like title card at lucasfilm until this uh this last week but regardless congrats could not be a more earned job i think for anyone in their entire existence um so they want to again want to find out who hired shan but who do they know could can help them who's going to help the bad batch find out who hired you who took up this bounty um there's a lot of underworld characters obviously in the clone wars universe there's bounty hunters like Cad Bane, Morale Laval, or even Boba Fett. Um, they could go to a pirate like Hondo. There's there's just a lot of underworld characters that they could go to. I don't know who would be one that they have contact with before. But like we had seen um, in the, I believe, second episode, uh, they had contacts with people who were previously shown like all the way as far back as Cut um, in the Clone Wars universe. So maybe they know Hondo. Maybe they know uh, Cad Bane. Maybe they know Boba Fett. Like We have no idea. Because Boba Fett, they might even consider like a brethren as like a not failed clone, but like altered clone. Um, so I don't know. If there's anywhere they can go. Uh, I don't know what the exact option will be. But if you guys know, please leave it in the comments below. Let me know what the, the connective tissue is. Because a lot of a lot of doing these breakdowns is just trying to figure out where stuff connects. And sometimes I can't always find it myself. If you know where, who, what Underworld character they know, please tell me. Tell everyone in the comments below. 
uh, like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff as well. Um, and we'll be back next week with Robbie and Clem. And we'll, we'll probably get Jeff in on one of these as well. Um, as always, thank you so much. I'm Ken Jack. See you next time.